Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Let There Be Talk. It is episode number 685 today on this February, Monday, the 27th. Gloomy rain in L.A. here nonstop. Floods everywhere. I've been indoors just chilling. Fresh back from my San Francisco Six Show run at the Punchline. I want to thank everybody who came out, especially some of my old friends. It was great to see, like uh, Eric Wong, Nikki Black, Fletch, Joey, Steve. Uh, who else? I mean, uh, an old neighbor showed up I hadn't seen in like 22 years. Lots of familiar faces. Andrew Dreskin, Laura Greenberg. Shout out to all of the old school that got off their asses and left their house and not afraid to keep living their lives. Anyway, great week up there. Got a lot of work done. Did six one-hour shows. It was, uh, I was exhausted. I got home yesterday at seven. Uh, No, I got home at like three in the afternoon, chilled with Gertie, and then went to bed at seven. And woke up this morning at 7. It is, uh, it is exhausting doing comedy and traveling and uh, writing and performing. All of that, it, 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 you just you get home and you're like, wow, I'm torched. So, but it felt good. It felt good to be in the Bay Area. It was uh, a little cleaner this time. Seems like... Uh, not as much uh, dirty shit all over the grounds and stuff, but I don't know. I might have been just uh, imagining it, but felt good to be up in the Bay. Felt good to be at the Punchline. I have not been there since, I guess, 2018, if I remember right. It was one of the early clubs I headlined in back in the day when I started comedy, and it's an A club. And I always want to be good in that room because uh, I can't take it for granted that I'll just be there every year. I got to keep kicking ass. I got to keep writing. Got to get funnier. Anyway, thank you, everybody that came out. It was great to be in the Bay Area because I have so many Bay Area memories. A lot of them have to do with music. And one of those Bay Area memories is... Seeing Journey in 1978 on the Infinity Tour when Steve Perry had just joined the band and to the left of him, the incredible Greg Raleigh who was singing and playing B3. Just that pivotal record of those two voices together. Just unbelievable. I never forgot it. And I've been lucky enough over the years to become friends with Greg Raleigh. And that's one of the beauties of this podcast to meet your heroes and they are not assholes. Greg Raleigh has got to be one of the nicest humans I have ever met. Super nice. And over the week, last week, February, I think it was 22nd, he returned to the stage in Austin, Texas to play keyboards and sing with journey on their 50th anniversary tour there's been a lot of back and forth in the press between jonathan kane and neil sean and a lot of uh as my grandma would say a lot of ugly stuff a lot of talking ugly (laughs) my grandma when i'd be like oh ah fuck that guy she'd be like oh now you're talking ugly But there's been a lot of back and forth over the last eight months. And at one point, there even seemed like Greg Raleigh might join Journey for the entire tour. Boy, I was fucking hoping for that. Not only uh, for the fans, but for him. I just thought, how cool would that be after all these years? 50 years later... He's out on the road with a band that he helped start with Neil. Imagine that. Greg Raleigh. I had him on before, by the way, if you're going like, hey, you didn't ask him about any of this other stuff. I had him on the day of the 50-year anniversary of Woodstock. 
And I mean, you have to think about Greg Raleigh. What a rock and roll icon this man is. This guy played Woodstock. You understand? He's in Santana. He sings Black Magic Woman. We were laughing how people don't even know that. It's crazy. He starts Journey with Neil. They put out one of the greatest records of all time, Infinity. He's still out there. Played with Ringo for seven, eight years. Now he's got a new band coming out with his son. He just blows my mind. He's a two-time Rock and Roll Hall of Famer. And this is the third time he's been on Let There Be Talk. He was on when he was doing Journey Through Time. I interviewed him, Neil, and Dean, which, by the way, Dean will be on the show next week. Dean Castanova, drummer from uh, Bad English, Wild Dogs, and Journey, and Journey Through Time. So, sit back and enjoy this episode. Oh, my God, I had so many questions. The second I saw the YouTube clips, I was like, I need to talk to him. How did the sound checks go down? How did the song selection happen? Uh, you know, everything. And uh, he, he just said, sure, let's do it. And wow, so cool to have him on. Thank you, everybody, for the support. And I hope you dug the White Reaper episode last week. Join the Patreon if you can. Dean Del Rey is the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. We got some new Patreoners right now. Uh, Amon Connor and Javier Gagu, new patroners, which by the way, it was great to see, uh, I met Emily, she's a new patron, and she came to the San Francisco show, that was very cool, and um, I also have a, a lot of new merch, deandelray.com, for the Perry Shaw shirts have been restocked, and the Gertie hoodies, all sizes available now. Tickets for Dean Del Rey shows coming up March 10, 11 in Fort Collins, Colorado. Four shows I will be at the Comedy Fort. And then a seven-day residency at the Comedy Cellar in Las Vegas, Nevada, the Easter week. So those are some more upcoming shows. And, and in between that, I'll be at the Comedy Store and the Laugh Factory and wherever else in Los Angeles. Episode is brought to you by StandardAndStrange.com, which, by the way, I went to while I was in the Bay Area. I spun, spun into the store. Oh, my God. The store just kills me every time. Picked up some new warehouse denim. I bought some white denim. I have not owned any white denim. I picked up some white denim for the summer. Summer here. I got white denim. <laughs> Uh, anyway, standardandstrange.com for all your denim, your boots, your leather jackets, any kind of kick-ass, cool clothing, standardandstrange.com. Hit them up on Instagram, New York, New Mexico, and Berkeley slash Oakland, California. Also, feed your dog the finest dog food you can, Migos Dog in Los Angeles. They do delivery now, and if you sign up, for delivery, you get a special discount, MigosDog.com, human-grade, organic, clean food for your dog. You can pick it up at Erwan or Healthy Spot, available all over California. Go to MigosDog.com. They got beef, chicken. Uh, what else? They got duck. They got a puppy uh, mix. Migos, that's all Gertie eats, and she eats the hell out of it. Migos dog.com thank you so much for tuning in every week please leave a review and subscribe on my itunes or my youtube channel and uh patreon will be a bonus episode this week and a live zoom on patreon i'll be talking about the black crows i'll be talking about uh roger waters re-recording pink floyd's dark side <laughs> and my thoughts on youtube you, YouTube, <laughs> you two playing in Vegas without Larry Mullen Jr. That's some of the stuff coming up on the Patreon bonus episode. Keep the candles lit. Here he is, Mr. Greg Raleigh. Hey, 
Uh, can you see? Can you hear me? I can hear you, buddy. Can you see me? I can see you. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> All right. You always look great, man. You know what? It's, it's funny. I was I was going to put this on my big computer here, and it said, "Well, you have to get another app." And I was like, "Son." So I, I just got here. I've, I've been working on it for ten minutes. I find it's like dribbling through this. And I, but anyway, so here I am, dude. Good to see you. The return of Greg Raleigh. You've been on. You've been on three times. Look at look at that wood ceiling. That looks beautiful. Is that your house or a studio? This is a. Uh, this used to be. I, I recorded. I practiced to do Ringo in this this loft. That's in. Uh, it well, was a guest house, which is now my daughter's house, and um, and my office was up here, and my office now is is dwindled down to a cabinet. What used to be my office, you know, I'm barely keeping this alive. Thank God I have my brain together for a second to keep it going. But anyway, so that's where I am. And the studio is right across the, the way, which you will see when you come out here to ride the motorcycle that we got for you. Yeah, I'm 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 about to block in that trip. I need I need to come hang out with Greg Raleigh and do some dirt bike riding and hanging. Yeah, what yeah. What else is there, right? <laughs> <laughs> so true, you know, because uh, I'm going to do it in the next two months. I'm like, nah, I got to do this, you know. Yeah, you had a you had a pretty uh, incredible weekend, a, a strange weekend. I'm sure it had to be strange after the um, the long, you know, weird go around in the press and everything of like, oh, Greg Raleigh's he's going to be joining the band. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's it, back and forth, back and forth. But I had secretly kind of known uh, for a while that you were going to do at least Austin, right? It's kind of where it ended up. I mean, Neil called me about doing this a while back, and and we just went through it over and over and over and with the lawsuits that are going on. I mean, if you don't know about those lawsuits, you're living under a rock. And so I'm quoting somebody else that said that. That's really true. It's everywhere. And they they had their own problems, and it's like uh, that was it. And I I can't be a part of that. I'm not part of the band anymore, and all that. But to go and celebrate this 50 years, of which I said in the the speech that I gave about it, I, I told Neil, okay, when I get up there, I got about a 30 second speech. That's all I want to do. But I'm happy to be here, and and journey is like a runaway freight train with no brakes it just keeps going and going with people coming in and out and in and out and they do and that's it it's true and thanking all the guys for getting it that far i was there for eight years built it to that and you know perry came in and then john after that and they carried this on to great lengths that i never thought would exist i mean you can't i don't have a crystal ball i don't know what's going to happen so it was great to do and i they arranged it really well where it actually became like a an encore and it was it was very cool a lot of fun i had a ball i had a blast yeah 37 minutes of just incredibleness you know and uh at, at at any point how does first of all let's get into this at any point were you going to do the whole tour or was Neil just saying that out in the press or what was going on there? We'll never know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I practiced a lot of stuff. It was, for me, it was kind of like, you know, a journey through time. You see, you saw that. And so it was kind of like that for me. So I, I went over uh, the journey through time stuff that I had and I did that for a while, and then it, it just kind of dwindled down to other things, and that's fine. And and it ended up being in Austin, and that was fine with me, as long as it happened the way it did. And it was just honest to God, like this business is, it just kind of meanders into whatever it's going to be. And just be ready for it. So I had practiced all this stuff, and then we finally got, came down to a certain amount of songs. And I didn't know that it was going to be the way I was done. They had me do any way you want it at the end. I, I thought I was going to show up somewhere in the middle. 
I did. I thought it should in the, in the middle of a journey because journey is journey now. It's like I was just I was just there because I, I from 1973 on I was I was there for eight years and then it's gone on 40 afterwards. It's like 42 years after that. That's incredible. How many bands do you know that go through these kind of term turmoil, this kind of turmoil, and still continue? That's what's amazing to me. It's still continuing, and journey has become journey. It's household household name and and it goes through changes all the time it's amazing it's it is amazing because it's a lot like kiss it was kind of burned down to the ground you know pre-arnell like kiss you know kiss was you know they're drawn smaller and smaller to where they were almost into clubs and then of course they put the makeup back on and and get the original guys in 96 again and and bring it back up but we're journey you know, they had Jeff Scott Soto. They had the guy before him. Yeah. And then they had, uh, they get Arnell. They get some Oprah Winfrey press. Next thing you know, they're they're coming out of the ashes. And then, you know, the Sopranos it gets the big song at the end of the entire series. And so there's these weird magic bumps that kept them yeah. in the game. And, yeah. and and without the songs, they would not even be in the game. You know, that's the key. The actually, I think more than the key, that key, which is true on the side of the musician. It's as I put in in Hall of Fame and that night in Austin. This is all about fans. Fans love the music. They live with it. They, you know, it becomes a part of them. They they go through changes with it, you know, in their lives and things that pick them up. I I get texts all the time about that. Your music saved me from this, and it makes me happy here. Or some sometimes it makes me sad because of their own lives, and, and that says a lot. You know, music is supposed to be whether it makes you angry, uh, happy, uh, complacent, melancholy, whatever. It's got to make you do something. If you feel it, because that's what it's for. It's, to, it's supposed to make you feel something, joy, peace, whatever. And Journey has pulled that off through many, many, many songs through different people. And and it was kind of the proof in Austin. It, it was like they were blown away. I Man, I couldn't even go to the grocery store after this. <laughs> well, really, people had people go, man, I saw that. I said, yeah, but I got to go. I got to go get some avocados, man. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) You know, Journey to me is a lot like Def Leppard to me, where Def Leppard to me, those first couple records have this core cult following that really love them, you know. Uh, And then there's this giant hysteria on and uh crowd that doesn't know about the early Def Leppard or doesn't really listen to it much. With me, with Journey, those first four, you know, the uh, the the debut all the way up to Infinity. This is some of the most incredible rock I've uh, I've heard in all my life. I've always loved your voice, and you are an absolute god to me. So when I hear you with Neil. The chemistry is mind boggling. And like that night in Austin, I watched it like three times and I watched Journey Through Time. This is a whole different thing, man. And what feels to me is just feels so organic. That's what it is. You know, you two step on, you were kids when you were making music and here you are 50 years later. Yeah, yeah. I, the, it's a funny thing. I, I, the, it's just, it's like riding a bicycle. You know, I get to sit there and start playing with Neil. Because we built this stuff, we built this music and played. We we would have been a jam band had it been later in life. We'd be out there with Dave Matthews and Fish and things like that. We were playing out of time stuff and across the bar and all that. And and you just remember. And there is a, if you're with somebody that long and 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 building music, it's funny. As you you come back to it with that person, it's like riding a bike. You you just play with each other, and it's the same. It's just like when Luke came up and played, 
on on Black Magic Woman. He came up and played. Well, I did it with him with for seven years with Ringo, and it was the same. It's like I know what you're going to do, even though he boy he throws wrenches in there all the time. But you, you pay attention, and, and it's great though. It, and it's kind of what's lacking. Also, at the end of that that show. And we went to the hotel and went into the bar, and this young girl comes up shaking. She goes, I've never seen anything like this. I mean, she had to be in her 20s. They don't play music like this anymore. I said, yeah, no, not quite. Well, I will tell you this. Um, I've seen thousands of shows, and that's no exaggeration. And in the top 100 of those was Journey Through Time, just in a, f- a few years ago, when I went, I still talk about it over and over and over. I'm just like, man, you don't even know how incredible this concert was. It was just, it was just pure soul and history, and it, and that was a little shed of it right there. That I hope that if Journey Through Time ever happens again, that the people that see the Austin clips go, wow, we got to go see that. Because there was plenty of Journey Through Time clips. And I felt like people weren't talking about this enough. I was like, you don't understand how great this is, man. It's a punch in the face. It shows the true history. And that's why we chose what we did when I talked to Neil about it. So we got to do of a lifetime. That song always got people off their feet going, what was that? For some reason or another, it just does. And then closing with Black Magic Woman was bringing it back to Santana, which he was in. I mean, we could we could play a Santana song that he played solos on that Carlos got credit for. You know, it, it, he was there. He did it. You know, as he put, as he put it, you know, I picked him up from high school. He wasn't going to high school. He was sitting in the quad with a guitar, and and we went to. Uh, Santana recording of Braxis. And he jammed with us and stuff, and that's where that started. So, I mean, I've, literally, I've known him since he was 15 years old. It was a long time. And it, and, and to, get back to, to get back to that, it's a long time, but the music part of it is like you don't forget how you felt when you were playing with someone. I don't know why. Now, I would never ask why. It, I don't care. It's like... You just sit down. Same thing with playing with Santana. We did Santana 4. It was the same. It was like, there's that energy. I, where does this come from? You just read each other and like just happen. Yeah. Yeah. What? How does it go down? You guys finally get into the, the song selection uh, just the same way of a lifetime, feeling that way anytime into Black Magic Woman. You guys... Figure that out. There's going to be a chunk in there that the audience obviously doesn't know. A lot of people, you know, they're there for the Don't Stop Believings. Um, was there other songs? Did you guys rotate in and out? Like, how about this? The emails back and forth. How did that selection go down? I suggested, Neil, let's do Love a Lifetime and Black Magic Woman because we played it with Journey Through Time. And we did it totally different. It was lighter, bluesier, and it was really cool and different. And then when they were, he goes, that's a great idea. And then they rehearsed it up like the original. I said, well, let's do it that way then. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. And uh, But let's just go have a good time. The whole point is music supposed to make, like I said, it's supposed to bring something out of you. I couldn't get the grin off my face, and neither could Todd, the bass player, Jason, the keyboard player. They're looking at me, going, "Oh man, this is alive. This music was alive." And in the end, and and it was. It just was great. And again, it's like it's the reaction from the crowd when you play music, and the reaction the reaction from the crowd is is high. You get higher when you're playing, and then they get higher again. And then you just it, it's a toss up. But it takes that to make it that exciting. What was the sound check like? But I mean, because we know there's just this internal civil war going on in the band. It was a sound check a weird vibe? Was, was Arnell and, and and what was he there? And and what's going on? You know, Jonathan Kane, he there? I I didn't feel any of that. I went over and said hello to John. He goes, Yeah, hi, how you been? Da da da. Went on to play. And actually, for me, the sound check for me, for what I played and what I sang and everything was better than the show. Wow. You know, it's my own personal 
personal thing. It was, and I told, I told, I called it the matinee. Why are we doing the matinee? I'm going to be burnt out by the time we get to the show, you know? And so, but I couldn't stop. So I, I let it fly. It was just fun to do. Like I said, that's what it's supposed to be. It wasn't every day for Journey either. And so it was something to look forward to. It was totally different and all that. And and we kind of knew what we were doing with it. Um, it's always potluck. You don't know. They might have gone, boy, why are you playing this? Well, we only have one guy, one guy that's made comment about putting Black Magic Woman in there. Well, why not? Yeah, yeah. We, we did that when we were young. Just bringing it all back. <laughs> that's the birth seat of Journey, you know, Santana. Like somebody that doesn't see that is just dumb, you know? Yeah. They, well, it's every you know, it only takes one to come up with something with I don't know, you know, nameless, faceless people. They can say anything they want, and that's fine. I, you know, that's your opinion. It's okay, but I can tell you, those people that I saw were blown away, along with me. I had a ball. Oh my god! Now, was that your Hammond down there? Was it rented? Uh, how did that go down? No, that's mine. That's, I told Neil, you know, gotta have mine. It's a brand new one. It's the old ones always failed. And, and in fact, I did this with Ringo. I ha- I bought that one where I actually, I got endorsed by Hammond and they gave it to me. And uh, it, I said, well, I got this sitting here. And instead of going through three organs at the show before I can pick one that's not broken somehow, let's use this one. And let's take this one out because it, it it's bulletproof. It's not tube driven. It just sounds it. It's an amazing instrument. And and on top of that, the bottom tier, you can MIDI. I could put strings in there. I could do many different things with it. But I prefer it as the organ because I just beat it up. I can't help it. It's so great when you get to hear the organ in journey music, you know? Because it's such a key part of that early sound. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's really what we're doing. You consider it 50 years. It's a ma- half a century. It's amazing. And still working, still going. With all the, the troubles that could come, doesn't matter. It's just going to keep going. And people love it. And I was there to help that along. And it, that's how I felt. I, I was thinking about when I see that, I go, I was seven when that band got together. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Most people weren't alive when that band was together, you know? Oh, I, I, I was. I did, gave an interview. I said those people that haven't been, that were at the show that weren't even conceived yet. It's lived a long life. And it's going to keep going. They're excellent songs. They're just excellent songs. It's interesting to me that I saw you in 1978 on the Infinity Tour at Day in the Green, and then I saw Journey Through Time, and these are two concerts that are so deep in my heart. It's bizarre how far apart they were, but like I didn't even realize how much I needed the Greg Raleigh version of Journey until I saw Journey Through Time again, and then it just opened this can of feelings for me of like, Oh my God, of a lifetime. Oh, these records, I listened to them over and over and to see it live and to hear you sing, is just unreal to me. And you sound fantastic. Thanks. Uh, that's really kind of you. I, uh, when I had my own band for 10 years and, and we played it in Santa Cruz, that's where I learned a lot about this stuff. And it's like country artists really treat their fans well. well these guys have come up with, they obviously a tattered album that they've had forever of journey or santana they were just tattered for an autograph right oh look i said man i owe this guy something uh it, these are the people that made my life and that's true anybody that doesn't recognize it um, from the other side from the musician side is really missing out it's uh it's amazing what what they do, they're Herbie Herbert, the longtime manager for for Journey, and part of Santana, my lifelong friend, God rest his soul. He said, getting them to pull out their wallet and buy something that they think they need, they really don't need this. 
but they do need. And that's the magic of what happens. You may think about that. I did. It's like they, they're going to a store. I got to have this and <laughs> feel lucky. There's that great uh, Herbie Herbert Instagram, man. And they show, they put up old photos all the time that are just great. Uh, what was that other band in between, you know, you had in the 80s with Josh uh, Ramos? Oh, The Storm. Yeah, The Storm. So there's this Herbie Herbert Instagram, and they got a lot of old Storm photos, man. Yeah, I, you know, oh, that reminds me, God, I've started a lot of bands. And I, I met with, I met here in Austin uh, uh, years back um, uh, when I was playing with Ringo and Donnie Whiteman worked with Aerosmith. They were in town. They were playing with Cheap Trick. And he goes, come on, come to the show. And so I got backstage, met Steven Tyler. And and Tyler goes, he he goes, oh, you're from Santana. And and Donnie goes, no, you don't understand. He's the guy who sang Black Magic Woman. He goes, what? And and they started Journey. What? And he goes, what are you doing? I said, I started another band. He goes, Give me a hug. I only had one. <laughs> <laughs> it about killed me, right? <laughs> it was really fun. But I just keep doing it. I don't know. It's, it, it's my drive. I just do. I started this one called New Soul. That's the latest one with my son and Yayo Sancho. And, and we've recorded 20 songs. We're just waiting to get get it to somebody that's going to hear it. Um, yeah. That's the next one. Are you guys going to do any touring? Yeah, when when it all comes time. It's almost like you've got to do something else. It's not all about the music anymore. It's not the same industry. No. And, you know, it, it just isn't. And and to go out there and play in clubs and do this and try and build it, and, you know, it, you got to go about a little harder. And uh, or it's just, you know. It won't work. It it takes so much time. When you're young, it's really cool. That's great. Gypsy life. Hey, we're traveling. Who cares? We're having fun. And you're still working to make it happen. And that was true about both bands. Santana was more a phenomenon. And Journey was built. It was built. And it continued to be building. That was my point. It just continued. And more things came out. It's just glad to be a part of something like that. Both bands, they're incredible. I feel like Neil plays completely, like, way better when you're around. Are you some kind of barometer for him? Does he look at you like, hey, don't be playing any of that, you know? Do you ever give him that? Because he he seems to really wrangle in when you're around and play those solos note for note. No, I, you know, that's on him. It's like, he can play anything, you know that. I mean, really, he knows that I like the blues style about him, the bluer style, and always have. So if that's happening, I'm not saying a word. It's just happening. Okay, like all, like I told you, just you're trying to help the song along be what it is, and and that's that's what goes on. I tell you, uh, it was great to see Dean back in the band, also because oh yeah, uh, when I saw him in Journey Through Time. I had no idea, and I, uh, I, I'm going to interview him on Monday, but I've known this guy since Bad English days and Wild Dogs back with Mike Varney and all that, but I had no idea this guy could sing basically the Steve Perry stuff perfect. And it, it, it leads me to believe, do you think the audience, because if Arnell left, let's say, and they got you back in, do you think the audience cannot handle Journey without a front man? And yeah, you know, because uh, Dean can sing this stuff, no problem. But would it be weird to the audience? Like, there's no front man. You think that's what it is? I don't know. I, I couldn't answer that. All I know is, yeah, he sure can. And, and some a friend of my son's came up to me and he goes, I'm convinced that you're only part human because. He can do that, play the drums the way he does and sing the way he sings at the same time. It's like, are you kidding? Oh, what a talent that is. And uh, But as far as, man, I can't read that stuff. I I don't know. 
long time. It, it became a thing where you had to have they call the front man, you know. And and I I always look back. It's like, well, you know, the Beatles had four singers. They did pretty good. Why why is it that it has to be one guy, and he's got to be out in front? You know, there's guys that do, and they are great, and I'm not saying anything about it. But why is it now? It's just got to be this. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, New Soul, I'm in the band I'm working with. I want everybody to sing between Yahya, myself, and my son, and we have we're we're doing that because it's, I think it's more entertaining. You know, I remember when before we were called artists. And then for some of the elite, it would be artiste. But it used to be a, a musician. We play music. And, and the, ta- the, the entertainment was in the playing, really about that, more than anything. And that's where we started. That's what I do. I, I, and I always go back to it. It's, uh, it's got to feel good. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Like when Phil Collins moved to the front, you know, it was kind of like he wasn't your typical front man. I would have been fine with him on the, just the drum singing, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that have to have it the other way. I, you know, it's kind of like uh, they I, they need that focal point. And it's just like the articles about bands. There's always they got to have this catchphrase. They got to you know and they eliminate, put it down to this because it's the nature of the game. And so that's kind of what happened. Everybody had a front man and, uh, you know, whether it was a guitar player or whether it was, you know, a keyboard, whatever. And uh, it just had, it's it's the way they could focus on something and make a story out of it. And a lot of times those very people that drive the press help destroy it because now it's all about one guy instead of what it really takes to build something like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and what about Dean's playing, man? Talk about Pocket. That guy's got this crazy feel, man. It's just oh, I know. right when you think he's going to be behind the beat, he just comes in, bam, and it's perfect feel. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, he's, he's very good. He's very good. Journey through time and and doing this in Austin a couple of nights back. It was like, like riding a bicycle with him too. I, I never worried about a thing. Neil picked out some great players, you know, and between he and John and these, the other three, it's like pretty simple to play. All you had to do is your homework. Let me ask you this: I was there when the uh, guy came in and sang at sound check, and I was like, "Who's that guy?" And nobody really knew who he was. Journey through time. I was like, "Oh, Neil's friend." Now he's in Journey. What's his name? The keyboard player up by uh, Dean. Uh, Jason. That that guy, he they got they got like three Steve Perry's. I keep hearing this stuff. You know, when I met Jason, he was just playing the keys, right? And, uh, and so that that's a keyboard guy. I remember Neil was telling this. Oh, there's one part in other life, and you got to play it kind of like this. And uh, I said, and don't fuck it up. And laughed at him. I said, I'm telling you. We're just going to laugh and smile through this whole thing. Just he, he was laughing at me. I was like, yeah, that, more of this. Just have fun. They're all, good. They're all great players. Have fun with it. Well, that's what it's about. 50 years, man. Got to just, you know, it's it should be a celebration, you know. Uh, unfortunately, in the world of uh, clickbait and everything, uh, it's more about lawsuits and uh, what's going on with each other than the music, you know. Uh, it's still putting butts in the seats, thank God, you know, because it could have tainted this whole thing, you know, but it didn't, thank God. And, uh, you know, so to see you up there and really uh, everybody smiling and having a celebration again, it's just fantastic. Yeah, it felt felt like that, you know. It, was, it wasn't phony. That's all I can tell you. It wasn't phony. It, that was for real. And it's the way it ought to be. It is for me, anyway. If it's not fun, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> now, I know this is uh, completely, you know, out there question, but after the jams, did Neil happen to say, like, at the bar, like, hey, we'll do some more, or no? No, no, no. He, he wasn't. 
when when it was over, I left. He went to his hotel. I went to my hotel. I'm just, you know, everybody wants to say, are you rejoining the band? That's not what was done. I, I came out there to celebrate 50 years of music. It was in my hometown. It was great. And that's it. Anything past that, I don't know. Don't know at this point. Yeah, yeah, it's a, that's journey, man. It's a total mystery, you know. Yeah, yeah, and well, and and plus, it's like you know, I'm getting it from fans like crazy. You know, you need to come back and do that. That was awesome to see. Okay, but it's not my call. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, journey past, right? I'm hoping for some more journey through time. And now that the people have seen this video and, uh, you know, it's it's going viral all over the place. I'm hoping Journey Through Time goes out again and does big rooms like, uh, you know, maybe a 20 date tour or something just to, so people could really see the stuff from those albums. Well, you know what? You never know. That's what I'm saying. You just never know. I I can't plan a thing. I It's kind of. Uh, I'm answering to a call. That's all. How about Ringo? That's is that still not no more Ringo or what's going on there? At this point, I mean that was you know playing with him for seven eight years, whatever it was. Um, depending on where you start counting, you know, uh, it was one of the be best things in my life in music. It was so uh, for so many reasons getting to meet him, and I kept my mouth shut a lot and just watched a lot to learn there and uh he's a great guy he's just he's just a great guy runs a, a great guy to work for and with uh, best way to put it he's just a phenomenal man and um and so uh, you know here comes this pandemic and i just had to bow out of it they were having everybody's having trouble with it People right. getting sick, coming back, coming home, could go out again. I didn't want to play to people with a mask on. It would have bummed me out. And I, but I had to say no to it, although I didn't want to. Yeah, well, hopefully you'll you'll be back there. It'd be nice to see you do another run with Ringo. It'd be nice to see Journey through time. It'd be extra fire to see you in Journey and some kind of. Uh, configuration that would just be mind-boggling and it'll be great to see the uh and hear the music of you and your son and that whole thing that you're doing uh i mean i do not take it for granted to get to see greg raleigh out there sing you know to me it's your vocals are just you know unbelievable to me and i could say it over and over but just as soon as i hear of a lifetime and then i know you know the infinity record inside and out and those and journey next and it's just amazing that i got to see it again all these years later you know there's a lot of people that aren't here anymore and uh i think people need to concentrate on that go see these people they're delivering especially you just delivering the goods man yeah thank you thanks thanks Steve. Well, I don't forget, you got to come out here, man. We, the motorcycle charge is ready for you. <laughs> you got to come out and visit. Hang out here on a summer day. And have a, Do a little barbecue. It'd be cool. I'm coming out there. And also, I wanted to thank you. I don't think, you know, I've done over 5,000 shows. And one of the greatest nights was when I was headlining in Austin. And I looked down and I'm doing comedy. And you were in the fucking front row. And I was just, I was like, this is a goddamn legend watching me, man. I'm just, I it was just so, <laughs> it meant so much to me that you came out, man. You know? No, it was my pleasure. And you are one funny son of a bitch. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> I, I get it. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, man. And, uh, I'm giving you a heads up. Joe Rogan's opening a comedy club out there, the Mothership, in a couple of weeks, I believe, or something. So you and your family should uh, frequent that place. Uh, it's going to be really good. And I will come out. And I want to thank you for wishing me a happy birthday. That was just mind-boggling. And I will be out in the next two months for sure. Once it gets a little warmer out there, I don't like riding dirt bikes cold. 
And no, I think that was one of one of that was one of the things you put in your your routine. First thing I found is I got to go find air conditioning. I got off the plane. My God, what's wrong with these people? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It was a hundred and ten when I was there. I know. Wow. That's a nice balmy day. What are you nuts? Wow. <laughs> I love you, man. Thank you for talking to me. And once again, congrats on that beautiful night. People, you can see it all over YouTube. There's, I'll post up this one great, perfect dead center clip of the whole 38. And the sound is good on that one. I saw that. The sound was good. It's so good. Some of the sound on them are, are bunk, but I'm going to post the good one. And I watched it twice all the way through. And every time I watched it, I was just like, wow, man. And Luke and Luke at the crushed it on Black Magic Woman. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was like old times for me. I mean, you know, and him too. Oh, great. Let's do that. And then, you know, it was a little changed up. And when we first started, so how do you want to do the guitar parts? And asking me, I said, you guys figure it out. You're playing. Whatever you want to do, I'll, I'll be over here hanging. <laughs> oh, oh my god i love you brother yeah same here tell the family i said hi and i uh, will i will i will and, and back at you and back at you they said the same oh, say hey and thank you for doing the show man i was dying to talk to you i had so many questions you know sound check song selection all that all right buddy we'll talk soon hope to see you soon adios yeah